score that was copied in from the linked model. This is the generic 12-inch floor. We'll select it, then choose the plywood floor from the type selector. You can see the ghost of the beam system through the floor element because they are so close together. But if we zoom in, we can confirm that the joists are present and just below the plywood floor. We're now ready to model the wooden structural elements at the upper floors of the building. Let's start by placing the wood columns. We'll use the structural column tool and load a new type from the library. It's in the structural columns wood folder. Let's load a timber column. This family has several types predefined for different sizes. We'll choose the 6x6 and make it available in our project. Next, we'll place these 6x6 wood columns using the Structural Column tool. We'll confirm the placement options to place these from level 2 to level 3 and use the At Grids option to place columns at grid intersections. Select all the numbered grids using the Control key to add to your selection then grids A and B in the vertical direction. Click Finish and 6x6 six six columns are placed at all those intersections. Let's zoom in on the exterior columns to see them better. Then we're going to use the Align tool to line up the exterior faces of these columns with the edge of the floor slab. For the corner, we'll do that in two directions. For a typical edge column, we'll do that in only one direction. And let's lock each of those alignments into place. We can repeat this for all of the columns we placed that are on the exterior of the building. That are on the exterior walls that are on the exterior walls of the building. 
Now let's look at these columns in the 3D view. We can zoom in on the corner, then use the Beam tool. We'll load a new beam family from the Structural, Framing, Wood section of the library. We'll choose a glue lamp beam and choose a 5 by 22 inch from the types that have been defined. Click OK to load it. Then we'll set the placement level to level 3 and use 3D snapping to place these beams at the tops of those wood timber columns. We'll place these along grid line A. Now let's open the level 2 ceiling plan where we can place and view items above the cutting plane. We'll use the WT shortcut to tile and see both views side by side. We'll right click on one of the placed beams and use the create similar command to place more beams of that same type. Choose level 3 as the work plane for placing these new beams. Then click on the starting and ending point in the ceiling plan view. We can place one beam after another this way until we finish all of our beams on grids A and B. Returning to the 3D view, let's adjust the elevations of the beams. We can right click on one beam and then use the select all instances to select all of these beams in the view. Then we'll set the start level offset and end level offset for these beams to negative three quarters of an inch to lower them and leave room for a three quarter inch plywood floor on top of this floor framing. If we zoom in, we can see that the tops of these beams have been lowered just a bit. We're now ready to add a system of regularly spaced joists that will span between the beams we've already placed. Let's switch back to the Level 2 Ceiling Plan view and open the Beam System tool. We'll leave the work plane set to Level 3, so the new joists will be placed at that level. This time we'll set the elevation to negative 3 quarters of an inch to leave room for the plywood floor before we place the joists. To draw the boundary for our system, let's choose the Pick Supports tool and click on the beams we placed. Then we can choose the Pick Line tool and select edges of the floor slab to draw the other boundaries. We'll be careful to go around the atrium and elevation shafts. And finally, we'll use the Trim tool to clean up and join all of these segments into a single continuous boundary around the entire area to be filled by the beam system. To finish the boundary, we'll choose the Beam Direction tool and select which edge of the boundary the joists should run parallel with. We could have chosen either the boundary at the south or the north end. Now we can specify the spacing and the members for our beam system in the Properties palette. We'll use the Fixed Distance as our layout rule, but change the spacing to 2 feet. Then we'll change the beam type from these wide flange beams. The joists that we want to use aren't loaded yet, so we'll go to the Import tab and load the family from the Structural Framing Wood section of the library. Let's choose these open web joists and load in the types that are 14 inch and 16 inch tall. Now we'll choose these from the beam type pull down menu and click apply to lock in our selections. Now we'll switch back to the modify create beam systems boundary tab and click the check mark to create our system. Let's wait a few moments as Revit creates all these elements. Let's switch back to the 3D Structural Frame view so we can see that system better. Here's our beam system of joists at 2 feet on center. We're now ready to model our plywood structural floor. Let's start by moving our section box up just a bit so the floor at level 3 will be included. And we'll use the Reveal Hidden Elements control to unhide the generic floor that was copied in from the linked model.
This is the generic 12-inch floor. We'll select it, then choose the plywood floor from the type selector. You can see the ghost of the beam system through the floor element because they are so close together. But if we zoom in, we can confirm that the joists are present and just below the plywood floor. Now that we've created all the structural elements on level 2, we're ready to copy these elements up to similar locations on levels 3 and 4. Let's open our level 2 ceiling plan and we'll use a drag selection to select all the elements. Then we can use the filter tool to limit the selection to only the structural columns, beams, and beam system placed in the last steps. We'll choose the copy to the clipboard tool in the modify tab then paste aligned to selected levels and select levels 3 and 4. When we switch back to the 3D structural frame view, you'll see that the columns, beams, and beam systems have been copied to similar locations on the other levels. Let's change the generic floor on level 4 to the plywood type. And with that, we're done with our modeling of the wood framing elements for the floor systems.